I'm not wasting any time. Today, I'm about to give you the best tactic I have ever used in FIFA, specifically in career mode, because that's what we do. I'm not an ultimate team guy, bro, yeah? So I don't know if that will work over there, but anyway, stick around and see if it will work for you. Now, before we get into that, I'm just gonna kind of explain how I came across this tactic, what happened for this to even be a thing, and what are my thoughts on it, and also what results I've gotten from using this tactic. Now, it originated in FIFA 21, Crystal Palace, career mode. If you know, you know. If you don't know, get knowing. Marcel Coppin Savage is the guy that brought this baby to life. Not under the best circumstances, but we still got there. Essentially, this is a character I created in FIFA 21 as a manager. Don't really know how we came across that name. Just kind of pulled it out of the sky and it's stuck, bro. So a bit of a backstory on Marcel. He is, of course, German from München Gladbach. He is not necessarily your typical German manager about the whole Gergen pressing, high pressing, high intensity styles that you've seen from the likes of Jurgen Klopp or Hansi Flick. He's not that guy, bro. He's more of a tactical guy. He didn't necessarily have a system before this. He didn't have a philosophy before this. He was just a guy that took the game one game at a time. He is very pragmatic and he would often look at the opposition and just try to counteract them, stop them from doing what they want to do and exploit their weaknesses if possible. Now on that Crystal Palace career mode, we were there for two seasons and it did not go so well in the first season while doing this whole tactical approach. No real system, no real philosophy. We almost got relegated. I wonder if there's anybody here who watched that series back then. Yeah, it was not good. Now, the only reason we did not get relegated was because Marcel came up with a plan. He decided that, listen, if we're not going to score goals, we might as well not concede goals. And if we don't concede goals, we will not lose games. And if we don't lose games, there's always a chance for us to win games. And like I said, Marcel is a very pragmatic guy. So this formation is very much defend first, attack later. It's not necessarily 11 men behind the ball. Let's park the bus, but it's very disciplined. And there are also elements of pressing to it. So it gets a bit exciting. Think of it as a bit of a hybrid. And because of this change in formation, we ended up surviving relegation barely in that first season and carried on the formation to the second season where we finished fifth in the Premier League and also reached an FA Cup final, although losing. I think it's fair to say that this formation has brought some relative success to Marcel Coppin Savage. Now, we did not use him in FIFA 22. We opted for the more real life managers or recreating real life managers in FIFA 22. So we did not use him. By the way, we were ahead of the curve with that whole real life manager thing in FIFA. Now they have it in FIFA 23, I'm just saying. So now you have an idea of how we came across this formation. You have an idea of who Marcel is and what his thinking is is what his philosophy is. Now let's get into what exactly his tactics are and what is this amazing system that we ended up stumbling across. So we're going to start off looking at the default formation. This just refers to how the players will be lining up at kickoff. The formation contains three center backs, a defensive midfielder, two central midfielders, two wing backs, one attacking midfielder, and one striker, player 11 being the goalkeeper and player one being the striker, by the way. Notice how I'm not saying this is like a 3-5-1-1 or anything like that. That's because the formation will change depending on the situation we're in. Now, firstly, in defense, this is where you see the first change in the formation. The two wing backs drop back to make it a back five instead of a back three. The three central midfielders stay the same and the striker drops back to be in line with the attacking midfielder. So when defending, we're defending in a 5-3-2. It's not necessarily a very defensive way of defending because there are certain triggers on when to press and when not. So we're not necessarily going to be sitting back. Don't be fooled by the formation. And now the attack, it gets very crazy here. The two wing backs push up and become wingers and provide width for the team. The two central midfielders push up as well to help out in attack. The striker remains as a striker and the attacking midfielder remains as an attacking midfielder. The defensive midfielder does not go forward at all. So he is constantly staying back. The central center back drops between the other two center backs and becomes a sweeper and the two center backs remain there as well. 
Now we're back to the default formation. I'm just going to go through certain plays and show exactly what's needed from the players, how this formation is going to play out, the transitions between the players, and what exactly is required. First, we're going to start off with the central center back. This guy is basically going to be a quarterback for us. He's going to be pivotal in build-up play and pivotal in long passing. So ideally, this player is very good on the ball, he is very good at long passing and he may have the long passing trait. The long passing is gonna be useful with distributing the balls to the wing backs, to both the left and right wing back, either directly into them or playing the long balls into the spaces ahead of the wing backs for them to run into. Like I said, the central center back is also pivotal in build up play. As you're going to see, there's going to be this diamond in which we build up play with between the three center backs and the defensive midfielder. They're going to be playing the ball around them. Again, the central center back has the option to go out wide to either wing back. And now let's look at the other two center backs. We have a left and right sided center back. They don't necessarily have to be good at long passing because their roles on the ball is going to be for them to drive forward with it. They're going to have to be able to drive into midfield with the ball to be comfortable still and still help with build-up play. It's ideal for them to be a bit quicker, a bit more mobile because they cover more ground in the central center back. Honestly, even if the central center back has like 25 pace, bro, it's okay. As long as he's decent in the air and he is good at long passing, he will do a job for us. These two guys, however, have to be more athletic. They have to be more agile. They have to have better defensive awareness because they have more responsibility as well. They also cover the areas where the wing backs neglect, which is out wide. So if opposition players play long balls into those spaces, because you saw how attacking we get, they have to go out wide there and cover those areas. Let's now look at the defensive midfielder. This guy is key for us. He has to essentially die for the team, bro. He is just there to do all the dirty work, the work nobody really wants to do. He never gets forward, so he is always staying back. He does not necessarily have to be a baller or anything. He should just be a destroyer in that area. He'll cover the area just behind the defense, the area just behind the wing backs if needed as well. So he'll be moving around that space right there. He will also help out in build-up play and will just give the ball to the two number eights, the two central midfielders in order to get forward with it because they get forward and help out in attack. So his job is to just get the ball, play it simple, simple five-yard pass to either center back or simple five-yard pass to either midfielder and keep it moving, bro. You don't have to try anything fancy. Your main job is to just clean up if ever needed. So we already touched on the two central midfielders that they are basically going to be box to box going up and down the field. Now we're going to be looking at the wing backs. What exactly is required from them? This is probably the most demanding position in the system because in attack, they have to go all the way up the field and become wingers. And in defense, they have to come all the way back down to be defenders to form that back five. So stats such as stamina are going to be very important but you also have to look at things such as crossing because that's their main job. They keep the width and put balls into the box. They also have to have good work rate. So ideally having a high attacking work rate and high defensive work rate is going to help. So they'll be occupying those areas there and putting balls into the striker. So yes, a very, very demanding role to fulfill. Now let's look at the number 10. This guy has to just make things happen, bro. This is the more a more relaxed role in the team. You basically have all of this area to cover. If the winbacks is ahead of you, you can just roam around that area. You pick the ball up. You essentially are the creative guy here. You determine when the ball goes out wide. If it gets to you, you determine when you play the through ball to the striker. You have to be very good. So Stats such as vision, short passing, dribbling, composure, finishing, all these things are very, very much needed. And this is the flair player in the team, essentially. You are that guy, bro. All our hopes of scoring a goal lay on you. I'm interested if there's anybody who can remember the player that played as our number 10 in that Crystal Palace team on FIFA 21. If you do remember, drop it in the comments because that guy was a legend. 
Then we have our striker up top. The striker is also going to have some freedom. Him and the number 10 are going to interlink and they're going to exchange positions really because both of them are going to be roaming around. So he has all of these areas to go into. He does, however, always have to be in the box when the ball is out wide to get on the end of crosses from the wing backs like we previously stated. But he can drop back and the number 10 goes ahead of him or he can go out wide and the number 10 goes ahead of him because yeah it's just gonna cause more confusion for the opposition defense now there are the tactics right there fully explained fully illustrated and shown exactly how they are meant to look all that's left is for us to put them into the game and implement them in our team i'll be doing this in the next video where we will be using the in-game player tactics and in-game instructions to essentially bring what we saw on that graphic to life in FIFA. Now I got some great feedback in the last video regarding teams I should be doing my next career mode on some good suggestions and I'll also ask for more suggestions in this video. I'll leave it for like a day or two or so and then we'll start our next career mode. Got some good suggestions such as Nice, such as Salta Vigo and stuff. Teams that I didn't even think of that are very very interesting. I personally am interested in doing a Serie A career mode because the league is actually licensed. They have the real life broadcast packages which make the experience more realistic, the trophies in the game. Yes, unfortunately certain teams are not licensed. Like for example, Juventus is back but Napoli is gone, so on and so forth. But we just kind of have to deal with that. But do continue to give me more suggestions for teams. And let me know, will you be trying these tactics out yourself? Yeah, what do you think of them? Do you think there are any clear weaknesses in the system? Is it a bit crazy? Will it work? And like I said, try them out and let me know what you think. Copen Savage Ball is the future. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. But yeah, if you have enjoyed the video, drop a like on it and please consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate that. I've been Quichy Crusher and I'll see you guys next time.